Welcome to your at-home learning uh, for Chapter 11, the gas laws. Um, the good news is we're talking about the combined gas law right now, um, which we've already been talking about a lot. So we have P1, V1, T2, N2 equals P2, V2, T1, N1. So pretty cool there. Pretty excited to, to do that. Um, for this chapter in particular, though, they're not going to even be dealing with the N's. So just get rid of the N's, and uh, we're going to move on to the next part. All right, moving on. So it kind of goes over how we're combining all three of these gas laws. You should know that Boyle's Law deals with pressure and volume. Charles Law from your lab that you did is volume and temperature. And then gay lussacs Law is going to be pressure and temperature. So if we combine all of those, we're going to get a big mamba-jamba equation that the book does this. I know we don't really use the book. We use this. P1V1, T2 equals P2V2, and, uh, oops, not N, T1. All right. If you lay it out this way, it's a little bit easier to manipulate, and that's why I do that. So basically, we're going to be looking for one variable here. And remember, all temps are in Kelvin. All right, so don't forget, all temperatures in Kelvin. All right, so let's take a look at a sample problem. Again, we're dealing with uh, P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. Um, and we have a sample of helium gas, and that has a volume of 0 0.180 liter, a pressure of 0 0.800 atm, and a temperature of 20... Ah, wait a minute, I'm not going to leave that out there. Are you guys crazy? i got to cross that off. i got to add 273. All right, once I add 273, I get 302 Kelvin. All right, 302 Kelvin. At what temperature in degrees Celsius? So we got to convert it in Kelvin first. Will the helium have at a volume of 90 mils and a pressure of 320? So let's go ahead and label what we got here. All right, we're going to label what we have. Move my little ball here. All right, so we got volume one. Uh, we have a pressure one, right? Pressure one. We have what temperature in Celsius, and we have a volume two. Volume two. Um, and we have a pressure two. Let's check our pressures and make sure they're the same. The good news is in this, this problem, the pressures are the same. The volume is not the same. Yikes. So we got to convert the volume. Let's go ahead and make this one into milliliters. That'd be 180 milliliters. All right, so 180 milliliters. That makes it pretty easy to do, right? You know, you're just taking the 0 0.180 liter, multiplying by 1,000 milliliters, gives me that 180 milliliters. All right, so we got that. Okay, so now we got to plug it into our equation that I had up top. All right, and when I do that, I'm going to get my pressure 1, 0 0.800 atm. My volume 1 is 180 milliliters. Temperature 2, I don't know. And then I have my pressure 2, which is 3.2 atmospheres. I have my volume 2 to be 90 mils and my temperature 1 to be 302 Kelvin. Yikes, it's getting hard. It's getting hard to fit everything in here. But I can solve for temperature 2 by putting everything into my equation. So if I, obviously, so if you don't know, I'm dividing this side by this multiplied together. 0 0.800 atm. You guys all know this. I don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. 180 mils. I'm going to divide this side by the same thing. 0 0.00 atm. And 180 mils. I'm running out of room. So T2, if I solve for T2, I get 604 Kelvin. 
Obviously, that's not my answer because I got to subtract 273. And I get 331 degrees Celsius. Box my answer because I'm a good student. A lot of stuff on there. Take a minute to digest, spread it out. It's going to look a lot neater than this. I apologize, but I'm doing the best I can. All right, so moving on. So now we get a new problem, right? A gas has a volume. So let's, right when we start, why don't we take a look at what we got? So uh, we have volume one. Te well, temperature 35. Are you kidding me? We can't do that. We got to add 273. So if I add 273, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 100. Uh, Let's see, what am I going to get for Kelvin here? Give me one second. I'm going to add this up. I get 80308 Kelvin. 308 Kelvin. All right, 308 Kelvin. All right, my atmospheric pressure is 0 0.81. There's my P1. Here's my T1. And it says what volume in milliliters, which is good. Has a gas at negative 95. All right, so negative 95 plus 273 equals 178 Kelvin. Okay, all right, so that's gone. There's my T2. And then my pressure to, unfortunately, is this, which I'm going to have to convert. I'm going to go ahead and convert that to... Uh, ATM, so I have 802 millimeters of mercury, all right, 760 millimeters of mercury, one ATM, all right, give me a second, let me put that in my handy dandy pocket calculator, all right, 802, is 1.06 ATM. There is my pressure too. Okay, now we're going to take that information, we're going to plug it into our P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. Once I plug that in, now I can do it. So my pressure 1 was 0 0.850 ATM. My volume one was 675 milliliters. My temperature, my temperature two was 178 Kelvin. My volume two, we don't know. My pressure two, uh, my pressure two was 1.06 ATM. And my temperature one is 308 Kelvin. All right. So if I solve for V2 there, you guys all know how to do the math. I just showed it to you on the previous slide. We're going to get 314 milliliters. I box my answer because I'm a good student. So all you're doing is expanding all the gas laws that we've already done. Not too different, you're just adding one more variable. It's a pain in the butt, but you're just adding one more variable. Okay, so I've been teasing 11.7 ever since we started this chapter. Uh, here's the moles, and we're talking about the N. So this is volume in moles. So let's see, volume 1, N2 equals volume 2, N1. All right, so this is Avogadro's Law. We used it. We've been talking about it in all of the other combined gas laws, so it shouldn't be anything too surprising. So if we take a look, the book is going to list it this way. Obviously, you know what I'm doing. I'm going to cross multiply and set those equal to each other. V1, N2 equals V2, N1. If you've been on all the zooms, you know that if I have these numbers, if the numbers are opposite on the side, i.e., I mean, 1 and 2, you know that it's going to be a direct relationship, all right, a direct relationship, 
All right, so it's direct. Yay, let me make a little smiley face there. Okay, so that's it. Now, you know, if it's ones on one side or twos on one side, you know, that's an inverse relationship. You should be getting that in your mind now. You should be seeing that happening on every video and every time that we talk on Zoom. I talk about it just because those multiple choice questions are going to come up and you need to be able to know what they are. All right, so, oh, man, big tough question here. Let's go ahead and see if we can do this. All right, so we got, oh, we got some moles. We got N1 of helium gas occupies a volume of this, V1. Now, look, we just did so much harder stuff in the uh, combined gas law. This should be pretty, pretty basic, all right, N2. All right, so, again, V1, N2 equals V2, N1. All right, so volume 1 is 1 1.5 liters, N2 is going to be 1.2 uh, mole, and that, what volume, we don't know, we're solving for that, and 0 0.750 mole is going to be my N1, okay? So when I solve all of that and I do all that work uh, and do my math, I'm going to get 2.4 liters, Volume 2. I'm going to box my answer because I'm a good student. Right? What do we write here? Easy. All right? Easy. Um, so we want to make sure that we do have the easy problems in there mixed in with the All right. So let's take a look. This is what I talked about on our Zoom last week. STP, standard temperature, 0 degrees Celsius or 273, and then standard pressure. Now, don't forget, standard pressure could also be this. 101.325 kPa, it could be 14.7 PSI, it could be 760 Tor, all of these, all, dot, I'm going to say all, dot, 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 etc. all right, all of these, so the same pressure, all right, so what happens in these problems is it's going to say if it goes back to STP, so you have to automatically put in each one of these things into the problem. And we'll do some problems like it, so don't worry. All right, so that brings us back to stuff that we talked about earlier this year. That one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. We've already done that. 22.4 liters, one mole, and it has to be gas. All right, 22.4 liters. So if you take a look, it gives you a couple examples. It shows you that one mole of helium is going to weigh 4 grams. It's going to be 273 Kelvin because it's got to be at standard temperature. All right, and then you got one atmosphere, standard pressure. All right, SP. Notice that all the balloons are the same size. The masses are different. So every one of these masses is different. And when you when you calculate that out, but it's still going to be that, oh, wait a minute, how many particles are they going to have? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles in each balloon. All right, it's going to have that many particles in each balloon. All right, so if we did some basketballs here, um, the molar volume at STP, has about the same volume as three basketballs. All right, so we write the conversion factor. Oh, my gosh, we've already done this, Mr. Hate. Yes, everything always comes back to stuff we've already done. It's crazy. All right, so what is the volume occupied by 2.7 moles of N2 gas at STP? So whenever you get a problem like this, you need to do this. Cross this off. And rewrite 273 Kelvin and standard pressure. We can use whatever we want, 1 atm, whatever we want to use um, for that problem. Okay, so we're trying to get to liters of gas. Now, in this problem per se, you're not going to need to do too much. Why? Well, because this is just very simple. We're going to take our 2.75, again, this is just future planning, future planning, 
All right, 2.75, one mole, 22.4 liters. When can we use that? When it says STP, we can use 22.4 liters. We get 61.6 .6 liters of N2. Box my answer. I labeled everything. I have N2, and I'm good to go. All right, so how many grams now? How many grams of, ST, of this do we have at STP? Again, so STP, I, I told you, okay, we're always going to do this, but it's just starting with liters. It doesn't have any pressure, volume, or anything else. All right, well, it has volume, but it doesn't have a pressure, a temperature, or moles. Um, so we're going to start with 8.0 liters. Now, you've already done this. This isn't, you're, you're going to be like, oh, wait, I've already done this. 8 liters of helium, 22.4 liters, all right, 1 mole helium, and then multiply by the molar mass, 4.00, I think it's 8, uh, don't quote me on that, I could be off a little bit, and that's 1 mole helium, again, we're all back to crossing off units and all that wonderful stuff, when I multiply all of that together, I get 1.43 grams of helium. Box my answer because I'm a good student. All right, great job. All right, so now you have to be able to calculate density. So density is going to be molar mass. Remember I kept saying molar mass has the units of grams per mole. All right, so grams per mole. So you always want to remember that molar mass and molar volume, obviously, is going to be in liters. All right, so that makes it pretty easy. So now we come to the question is calculate the density of in grams per liter of O2 at STP. So density equals molar mass divided by molar volume. Okay. Um, so we got to figure out what the mass is. Oh, I can do that. O2. Let's see if I can do that. 16.0 times 2. I can do that without my calculator. 32.0. So I'm going to take that 32.0 and I'm going to divide by 22.4 liters because it's at STP. All right. This is grams per mole. And this is liters per mole. That's how those, those moles are going to cancel. And we get 1.43 grams per liter. All right, kind of crazy. Wait, let me check that. I think that's right. 32 divided by 22.4. 1.43 grams per liter. It's crazy that it just came out to the same answer as the other problem. I had to check. Um, all right. All right, we come back to a new gas law. One, all the everything else, eleven one to eleven seven, is basically been dealing with the same gas laws. Now we come to the what I call the nerd law. PV equals nRT. Since I'm a nerd, I can say that. Um, but PV equals nRT. So again, we're gonna have pressure, volume, moles. R is this this lab I really want to do with you is the ideal gas constant. So that's always given to you, so you don't have to, like, memorize it or anything. And then T is temperature, and guess, of course, you know that it must be in Kelvin, right? Okay, so this is something new, so you're going to have to pay attention uh, with this video. All right. Okay, so we have the ideal gas law relationship, PV equals nRT. If we rearrange it, we get the ideal gas law at PV equals nRT, right? So we can actually... We were going to actually do this in the lab. Calculate the, the atmospheric pressure. We'd give that to you. You deduce the volume from a problem that you're doing, and then you're going to dissolve magnesium in hydrochloric gas in a uh, gas collection tube, and that would bubble out all that gas. And then from there, you would then be able to calculate the R value. It's a pretty awesome lab. It's one I'm going to miss. Um, all right, maybe May 15th. We'll see. All right, the universal gas constant can also be calculated at STP using all this stuff. Uh, we use a temperature standard temp, 273. That's my standard temp. Don't forget ST. One atmosphere is my SP, standard pressure. One mole of gas has a molar volume of 22.4 liters. 
So if you plug all of those things in, you're going to get the gas constant. 0.0821 liter per at, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. All right? Now we can also convert that into other like if we wanted to convert this into like KPA, right? Let's see if we could do that. How could we do that? We're going to take our 0 0.01821 0 0.0821 uh, 821 Mr. Hate 821 atmospheres we're going to then take that one atmosphere times seven uh, okay well I'll do TOR then not KPA uh, TOR alright that was just off the top of my head okay and uh, I take that number and I can convert my R unit to match whatever pressure unit would be in the problem. 0 0.0821 uh, times 760 gives me 62.4. All right, so 62.4. What does it give me? 62.4 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Oh, sorry, let me rewrite that over here. 62.4 liter tor per mole Kelvin. So what I did, and I wrote ATM here, tor. What I did was I converted just the atmospheric unit to match whatever I could have in the problem. And you can do that for KPA or whatever. Just start with that number and that pressure unit, and then you can convert it or you can convert all your pressures to ATM in the problem. I usually do either way. Um, the book will give you a couple different universal gas constant values. And basically what I'll do in a problem as well, since you know obviously we're limited for time, I'm going to give you the one you should use. But I just wanted to show you that that's what you can do. All right. So another value for the universal gas constant is... Compa uh, oh, yeah, just what I just did. Well, I'm a name. All right, so there it is. There's what I just solved. Yay! Or TOR. This could be TOR as well. All right, so what I just did. So basically, let's get into some problems. Let's talk about how this works and how we solve for a problem. Okay, um, so in this problem, let's take a look. Let's find out what we have. Uh, we have liters. We have moles. What is the pressure in the tank? All right, so... We can use either one of the gas constants that we want, um, but it's asking us to solve in millimeters of mercury, so we're going to use our 62.4 millimeters mercury liter times mole divided by mole Kelvin. Okay, so we have PV equals NRT. All right, my pressure, all right, uh, we don't know. My volume is 20.0 liters. All right. My moles, 2.86 mole. My R value, millimeters of mercury times liter per mole Kelvin. And my temperature is not this. I got to add 273. That gives me 296 Kelvin. Again, all you're doing for all these problems is just plugging things in. So 296 Kelvin. So I got to divide the this side by 20. Divide this side by 20. 0 0.0 liter. And I get my pressure to be... 200 or 2,000, 2.64 times 10 to the third millimeters of mercury. I'm going to box my answer because I'm a good student. Now, take a second to digest what I just did. All I'm doing again is plugging in all the numbers that I have from the data. Go back up here. Here's my pressure. Here's my mole. Here's my temperature. So again, if you don't have multiple pressures, multiple temperatures, it's going to have to be a PV equals NRT question. So there's no multiple pressures and no multiple moles. 
There's no multiple temperatures exactly, so you're going to have to make that a PV. All right, moving on. So we have another problem here. Um, again, we're working on PV equals NRT, but we have to be able to decipher what kind of problem it is. So we look at this problem, and we have volume. This is O2, by the way, O2. Add it to, oh, no, 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 no. we got to add 273. So 293 Kelvin. At this pressure, so we got a temperature, we got a pressure. Now it's saying how many grams do I have? Holy cow. Okay, so we can plug this in. So I got my pressure of being 0 0.85 ATM. I have my volume at being 5.0 liters. Well, in this case, if I'm solving for grams, I don't know my N. So my N is what I don't know because I can go solve for N, moles, and then convert it into grams. All right? And that's going to equal N times my R value. I have to use my ATM one. A21 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Basically, all the R value is doing is going to cancel all the units except the one you're looking for. And my temperature is 293 Kelvin. All right? So if I solve for N here, I'm going to get... Give me one second. Uh, 0 0.180 mole of oxygen gas... Well, I'm not done yet because i got to convert that into grams. One mole O2, as we already talked about earlier, is 32.0 gram. All right, 32.0 gram times 0.18 gives me 5.8 grams of oxygen. All right, one of the highest level problems you'd have to do is this problem all right we'll do some more on the zoom and we'll practice it together okay our last slide for this lecture again calculating the molar volume so that means we have to use PV equals NRT so we have uh, we have grams oh boy what are we gonna do since we have grams here it's gonna be a little bit different uh, of a problem so we have the molar volume at being uh, you know, 0.250, so I think we're going to use this later. Use later. Because remember, molar mass, what I told you earlier, is grams per mole. So we don't have moles in here, so we're going to have to solve for moles. Okay, so we're going to use that later. We're going to use that at the end of the problem. All right, so we got PV and RT. That's not an N, Mr. Haight. That is a R. It's not RRT. It's NRT. All right. So now I got pressure. Let's see. Here's my pressure. All right. So let's go ahead. We'll put that in here. 0 0.813 ATM. Do I have a volume? Yes, I got a volume. But it must be in liters. in liters because my R has liters in it so I have to convert that so 215 milliliters one liter divided by a thousand milliliters gives me 0 0.215 liters we don't know what my N is my R is ATM so I have to use 0 0.0 821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. I'm trying to see if I can fit the temperature in here. And my temperature, oh my god, I didn't even notice that. Plus 273 gives me 303 Kelvin. 303 Kelvin. There it is. Look, I made it I made it fit. Alright, so once we solve for N, so we're gonna divide uh, the stuff from the right side over to the left. So basically, I'm just going to say you're dividing these things, and they're going to come over here. You're going to divide over here. All right, over here. 
All right, so you're going to divide that side, get n by itself. n is going to equal 0 0.00703 mole. Okay, well, what do I do now? Oh, wait a minute. I told you that to get the molar mass of the gas, you divide grams by mole. So I take my grams right here, 0 0.250 gram, divide by my mole, and I'm going to get 35.6 grams per mole. I don't have to identify the gas. I may have to in a future lecture, but it's going to come out exact, like 32 for oxygen, 44.01 carbon dioxide, etc. But that's your lecture uh, for today. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon.